thoughts and bolts, circuits and smiles. Nuts and bolts. Hi everyone, Porchadork here. I'm not doing a proper video review on this, but this is a somewhat interesting add-on kit that I felt needed a quick video just to show the people that might be interested in buying it exactly what it is and how it works. This is an add-on kit for any version of Metroplex. The one that you see here is my SDCC Metroplex um, that I got this year. And for any of my subscribers, I'm sorry it's been a while since I did a video. I've had two house moves since then and lots of stuff going on in my life. I'll get back to it eventually, but just wanted to do a quick video review on this. What this is, is this is two parts for Mega Moon Man's Metroplex upgrade kits, one of which is the hips, which on first pass here may be difficult to tell that there's anything there, but uh, what we're actually looking at is these, these black parts here. Um, the original knees looked something like this, um, and they've been replaced with these black parts. Now let me get in really close here, and you can kind of see those are um, the, the telltale signs of a 3D printer reproduction part. Um, these are some parts that Mega Moon Man puts out. But uh, essentially what these do is, if you look at the original piece here, you can see that it's, it's a static piece, there's no moving parts. Um, other than this slide here, which connects to the knee down in here and allows uh, for the battle station mode for the knees to slide together so that these two legs can be connected, uh, as I said, for the battle station mode. What the upgrade part does is it allows this joint to turn. Um, so it could already turn up here uh, above the knee, and I'm, I'm, I apologize that the chrome is so dirty, but uh, that was for me handling it, assembling the part. Um, but basically it allows you to turn above and below the knee, which allows you to get into a more G1 style city mode. Uh, in order to install the knee part, um, there are three screws on the, uh, the hip piece here, there are three screws in here, and then there's also two screws on a red cover on the leg itself, and that's actually what holds the entire leg onto the knee. But basically you need to take all those screws off, and there's springs and, and various parts inside, and you're just going to remove uh, this original part and replace it with the part here, and then put everything back together. And then that gives you your, your uh, knee movement there. Now that's one of two parts, um, and we'll get into the other part here in a minute, but I just kind of wanted to give a general review of um, the robot mode for these parts. So um, the ramp parts are in his chest, and you can see that the chest looks exactly stock, if it was put in right. Um, the chest is exactly stock, everything fits in there just fine. If I flip this door down, you can see that inside there is the, uh, the second set of parts. And these are the ramp parts. Now I have a ton of ramp parts that I ordered with my order. This is five pieces in addition to the stock piece. So this is a six segmented uh, ramp or road. And you can see that there is room for plenty more in there. If I were to venture a guess, I would say if you wanted to, you could probably fit 12 to 14 uh, total segments in his chest and still have room to close it. Um, I like this because I could still fit Scamper inside if I wanted to. So anyway, let me close that back up. Um, my only gripe with the set deals entirely with the knees. Uh, and the reason that I have an issue with it is this. You see if I move Metroplex, he just kind of has a, a wibbly wobbly to the legs that wasn't there before. And the reason for that is really because of this rotational joint. On the stock version that Mega Moon Man sent me, uh, it's probably just a little bit too loose. Uh, I could probably use some kind of adhesive to tighten up the joint and reduce that, but just by the nature of this joint, and you can see how easily that moves, that's kind of how loose it is. Um, just the nature of that joint is going to probably slightly reduce stability in robot mode, but not enough that he's going to fall over. I mean, you're seeing I'm just kind of jarring on him right now, and he's not going to fall over. But if you have your Metroplex pose in any kind of unusual poses, then you might have some problems with that. So anyways, I'm going to do a video break here, and I'm going to transform him to city mode, and you can see exactly 
the point of this kit and how you're going to get a more enhanced city mode by adding these parts. All right, and now we're back and we're in what can now be done as a G1 city mode. So this looks a little bit more like the G1 figure. Um, as I come in down here, you can see what essentially allows for this to happen. So these are the, the red part that I said also needs to come apart as part of the replacement knee. But essentially, without those parts, the, the stock figure wouldn't be able to sit like this. It allows this piece to, to rotate sideways where it normally couldn't in this configuration, um, which allows for the legs to sit completely forward like it should. Uh, I apologize for the non-straight angle there. So there's just kind of an idea of what the G1 style city mode um, allows for with the knees. So the more the more exciting part of this kit will show next, and I apologize if I'm a little shaky trying to get this to go, but um, just like the the base figure, you pull the ramp down, and normally that's what you get. That is the supposed ramp for the Metroplex figure, which drove me absolutely nuts. Um, I'm a big Metroplex fan, and I, I did not appreciate the short ramp. Now, what we can do is we can now deploy uh, the add-on kit, which folds out. And it's kind of a, a clever little thing here. I'm going to show on, just on this closest one exactly how it works. So each one of these is a segment. And the segments are held together. If I can get it to zoom in here. The, the segments are held in together by these little uh, circles right here. Those are parts that can move um, to uh, allow for the folding action to take place. These just slip on and off. Um, but essentially those hold each of the segments in place. And then essentially what you need to do, and it helps better to have both hands for this, but basically you just, you get those so that the, the it's more of an oval shape than a circle shape, and you get those to um, sit flush with the piece behind it, and you get essentially a flat surface. And then this piece back here, uh, allows for a swiveling movement. So if you wanted to have the road change directions or something of that effect, you could do something like that. So that's that's an optional piece that you can get. Um, I chose to order just to kind of see how the mechanism works, but that that essentially is is this is the way that the road works. Now, currently it's um, just kind of loosely deployed and, and not not sitting anywhere. Um, in any particular order. Now what we can do is this door, if I get under, underneath here, you'll see if I lift this up, there's this piece here. And what that is is it's a clip that attaches to the door so that the, the door will hold that piece in place um, and, and keep it flush. Now the connection mechanism is pretty, pretty clever as well. If I come under here, you can see that's how it connects. It connects to the very last piece um, through the, the three little holes there. So there's a, a swiveling piece um, right up here that connects through those holes, and that gives you your first extension on the ramp. And then this part here is um, the clip that clips to the door. So you can see if I press those together, now the door sits right up against the, the piece like that. Now that lets us do a couple different things. I can get a completely straight ramp if I wish. It helps if you rotate these little pieces here. I can get a completely straight ramp that is like that, that then levels out at the floor um, and then extends out further. And just to give, give you an idea of exactly how long of a ramp this is, it's longer than Metroplex itself. Now this is with five segments. But you can see, we've essentially got a real road coming out of Metroplex now, which is really great. Um, but the last feature I wanted to show off here is on the bottom of this piece, there is a kickstand that you put down. And once I get everything straightened out, you put that kickstand in place, and that allows pressure to be put on this on this uh, piece so that essentially it's not going to fall down when you're running cars or something along it. And that just clips in um, right here, just like one of the attachment pieces up above. So with that kickstand in place, 
you can put you know a decent amount of pressure on this and it's not going to collapse. So if I'd have been thinking I'd have brought a car in to test this out, but I'm just going to take one of these here, one of these pieces here, and I'm sorry I accidentally, this is a new phone for me, so I accidentally zoomed in there. So I'm going to slide that down the ramp, as I said, slide it down the ramp, so you can see that the ramp is not giving way. It's still keeping its shape and sticking together. So I don't want to make this video go longer than it needs to go, but um, that's essentially all of the working parts for the upgrade kit. Uh, I think it's a really fantastic kit. The The ramps, if you buy nothing else, buy these ramps because it's just a really clever design. I love the clip system. I love how it attaches to the original ramp. Um, and it's just a really solid piece. And then he even added, like I said, the, these swivel pieces in if you wanted to have a different type of road setup going on. Um, you could probably do a lot of really interesting things if you had multiple swivels. But uh, that's pretty much the kit. And oh, one last thing I wanted to show is if you if if the, this back door piece bothers you, you can also shove the original ramp back in and create a ramp more akin to something like that. That would then allow you to uh, put your cars and actually drive all the way in the city, which is kind of cool. Um, it also shortens up the ramp a little bit in the case that you've got five pieces like I do, so that it's now not not much longer than the original city. Because if, if anybody that owns Metroplex knows, this guy takes up a lot of room. So, I mean, I've got him here on a rather large table and he's taking up over half of it. So, anyways, replacement knees, brand new ramp parts to make your Metroplex G1 uh, complete. Um, if you want to order these, I'll put a link down to Mega Moon Man's thread. He prints these out with his own personal 3D printer. The quality is really good. I know getting up close in this light, it looks like there's a lot of imperfections, but in hand, uh, it blends perfectly with the original piece. Um, the only difference between the original piece and the add-on parts is there is... Um, two fewer holes. So there, on the original piece, there's two sets of smaller holes in between this bigger hole. But otherwise, they blend really well together. You'll never notice that it's an upgrade part. It fits together really great. It's it's easy to customize, make it shorter, make it longer, you know, make it turn, do whatever you want to do. So I highly recommend the ramp. I say order the knees and at, at your own risk and see if, if the offset of the, the slightly more wobbly robot mode is worth having the city mode. I guess it kind of depends on what your primary mode you're going to put him in is. I am going to try to add some uh, some adhesion to the knees and see if I can't get them a little bit tighter, but just be aware that you may have um, some stability issues or it may just be unique to my piece. So anyways, thank you Mega Moon Man for sending me these upgrade parts and uh, thank you everyone for watching the video. Robots.